endocrine system, the maintenance of homeostasis and the control of the metabolic activity of certain organs and organ systems are under the control of the autonomic nervous system and of the endocrine system. The former acts rapidly by releasing neurotransmitter substances in the immediate environment of the organ system being controlled, whereas the latter acts more slowly and at a distance by releasing hormones messenger molecules that use the bloodstream to reach their destination. Nonetheless, these two separate systems function together in orchestrating the body's metabolic activities. The endocrine system is composed of, one richly vascularized glands the pituitary thyroid parathyroid and suprarenal and pineal body. Two clusters of endocrine cells such as the islet of Langerhans in pancreas. Three individual endocrine cells scattered among the epithelial lining of the gastrointestinal tract and respiratory tract, diffuse neuroendocrine system cells. Hormones, hormones are classified into three categories based on their chemical nature, one proteins and polypeptides, such as insulin and luteinizing hormone, LH, are hydrophilic and bind to cell surface receptors on the extracellular surface of the plasma membrane. Two amino acid derivatives, such as thyroxine and norepinephrine, are hydrophilic and bind to cell surface receptors on the extracellular surface of the plasma membrane. Three steroid and fatty acid derivatives, such as estrogens and androgens, are hydrophobic and bind to intracellular receptors in the cytosol. The binding of a hormone to its receptor, either to cell surface receptors or to intracellular receptors, initiates signal transduction, the process of cellular reaction to the hormone. Signal transduction by cell surface receptor binding activates, protein kinase, which activates regulatory proteins, such as adenylate cyclase, to form the second messenger, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Other systems form different second messengers, such as cyclic guanosine monophosphate, phosphatidylinositol derivatives, calcium ions, and sodium ions. G proteins, which activate a second messenger system. Catalytic receptors which initiate aphosphorylation cascade signal transduction by intracellular receptor binding is achieved by entry into the nucleus of the hormone receptor complex, where the complex binds to the DNA in the vicinity of a promoter site, initiating Messenger RNA, mRNA, transcription with eventual translation oft mRNA to form the requisite protein. If the amount of hormone released is insufficient to initiate signal transduction, a positive feedback is generated by the target cell to ensure the release of a larger quantity of the hormone. Activation of a target cell occurs, however, that initiates not only the requisite response but also an inhibitory response, whereby a signaling molecule is generated that activates a feedback mechanism that shuts down the endocrine gland slash cell, preventing it from releasing more of the hormone. 1. The pituitary gland, hypophysis the pituitary gland, Hypophysis, responsible for the production of numerous hormones, is suspended from the hypothalamus of the brain and is housed in the cella tersica of the cranial vault, Fig 13.1. This small gland, the size of a pea, is derived from two separate sources, the neurohypophysis is an evagination of the diencephalon. The adenohypophysis is an outpocketing of the oral cavity, Rath's pouch. 2. Pituitary gland Hypophysis. Nerve fibers and neurotransmitter substances derived from the hypothalamus enter the pituitary and its vascular supply, respectively, to coordinate the release of the hormones produced by or stored in the pituitary. The hypophysis is subdivided into the adenohypophysis, anterior pituitary, and the neurohypophysis, posterior pituitary, each of which has its own subdivision, table 13.1. Residual cells of Rath's pouch remain inserted between the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis as colloid filled vesicles. The infundibulum is enveloped by a sheath of endocrine cell, known as the pars tuberalis. The pituitary receives its blood from superior and inferior hypophyseal arteries, branches of the inter nal carotid arteries. The two superior hypophyseal arteries vascularize the infundibulum and the pars tuberalis and arboris to form the primary capillary plexus, composed of fenestrated capillaries, of the median eminence. The inferior hypophyseal arteries predominantly serve the posterior pituitary. 
The primary capillary bed is drained by the hypophyseal portal vein, which delivers its blood into the secondary capillary bed, also composed of fenestrated capillaries, that permeates the anterior pituitary. Axons derived from neurons of the hypothalamus terminate in the region of the primary capillary bed and release their hypothalamic neurosecretory hormones, releasing or inhibitory hormones, which find their way into the primary capillary bed. The hypophyseal portal veins deliver the neurosecretory hormones into the secondary capillary bed, which permeates the substance of the anterior pituitary. The hypothalamus is able to regulate the activity of the anterior pituitary by releasing hormones, factors, listed in Table 13.2. For adenohypophysis, anterior pituitary The adenohypophysis, arising from Rathke's pouch, has three regions the pars distalis, pars intermedia, and pars tuberalis, fig 13.2. The capsule of the pars distalis sends reticular fibers into the substance of the gland fibers that support the parenchymal cells and the sinusoidal capillaries of the secondary capillary bed. The parenchymal cells of the pars distalis are of two types, one, cells whose secretory granules take up histologic stains, known as chromophiles, and, 2, cells whose secretory granules do not take up histologic stains, known as chromophobes. The granules of certain chromophiles are preferentially stained by acidic dyes, acidophils, whereas the granules of other chromophiles stain with basic dyes, basophils. Acidophils the most abundant, 3, cells of the pars distalis, are of two types, somatotrophs, which secrete somatotropin, a growth hormone, and mammotrophs, which secrete prolactin, the hormone that fosters the development of mammary glands in a gravid woman and lactation to nourish the newborn. Basophils are located at the periphery of the pars distalis. Three subtypes are represented, 1, corticotrophs, which secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, and lipotropic hormone, 2, thyrotrophs, which secrete thyrotropin, and, 3, gonadotrophs, which secrete follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. Chromophobes possess little cytoplasm, possess few secretory granules, and do not take up histologic stains. These cells are probably chromophiles that have released the contents of their secretory granules, although some investigators suggest that they may be stem cells. The most prominent cells of the pars distalis are the folliculostellate cells, whose function is unknown. The pars intermedia, zona intermedia, located between the pars anterior and the pars nervosa, houses colloid-filled cysts derived from Rathke's pouch and clusters of basophils that produce proopiomelanocortin. The hormones TI-melanocyte-stimulating hormone, TIMSH, Endorphin, corticotropin, and lipotropin all are formed by the cleaving of this prohormone. In contrast to lower animals, in humans, CTMSH induces prolactin release and is known as prolactin releasing factor. The pars tuberalis partially envelopes the stalk of the pituitary. Although it is not described as secreting any hormones, some of its cells contain FSH and LH. 5 Neurohypophysis, the neurohypophysis, posterior pituitary gland, develops from the hypothalamus and is divided into three regions, figs 13.3 and 13.4 median eminence, infundibulum, and pars nervosa. The entire neurohypophysis may be considered to be a prolonged extension of the hypothalamus. The hypothalamohypophyseal tract is composed of unmyelinated axons of neurosecretory cells located in the two nuclei of the hypothalamus, supraoptic. Paraventricular. The neurosecretory cells of these nuclei manufacture antidiuretic hormone, ADH, vasopressin, and oxytocin, and the carrier protein neurophysin to which these hormones are bound, Fig 13.5. Pars nervosa, the hypothalamohypophyseal tract terminates in the pars nervosa, and these axons are supported by pituocetes, glial like cells characteristic of this region of the pituitary gland. The hormones ADH and oxytocin are stored in their active state in varicosities of the axons, known as herring bodies, and are released, on demand, 
in the vicinity of the fenestrated capillary bed established by the two inferior hypophyseal arteries, tables 13.2 and 13.3. Asterisk non-toxic goiter refers to enlargement of the thyroid gland that is not associated with overproduction of thyroid hormone or malignancy. Numerous factors may cause the thyroid to become enlarged. A diet deficient in iodine can cause goiter, but this is rarely the case because of the iodine available in the diet. A more common cause of goiter is an increase in thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, in response to a defect in normal hormone synthesis within the thyroid gland. In this situation, TSH causes the thyroid to enlarge over several years. Most small to moderate sized goiters can be treated with thyroid hormone in the form of a pill. This treatment reduces TSH production from the pituitary gland, which should result in stabilization in size of the gland. This treatment often does not cause the size of the goiter to decrease, but usually keeps it from growing any larger. Patients who do not respond to thyroid hormone therapy are often referred for surgery if it continues to grow the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is a bilobed gland located in the neck, antero-inferior to the larynx, Fig 13.6. The right and left lobes are connected across the midline by the isthmus. Occasionally, ascending from the isthmus, there is a pyramidal lobe, a remnant of the thyroglossal duct from which the thyroid develops in the posterior region of the embryonic tongue. A thin capsule surrounds the gland, and embedded in its posterior aspect are the parathyroid glands. The capsule sends septa into the substance of the gland, subdividing it into lobes, and conveys the gland's vascular, neural, and lymphatic supply to its parenchyma, which is arranged in cyst-like follicles, al mm in diameter, whose lumen contains a colloid that is surrounded by simple cuboidal follicular cells and occasional parafollicular cells. Each follicle is surrounded by the basal lamina, manufactured by the follicular cells, Fig 13.7. Binding of TSH, produced by the anterior pituitary, to TSH receptors on the basal cell membranes of follicular cells and the presence of iodide, which enters the cells via iodide pumps of the basal plasmolemi of follicular cells, stimulate these cells to synthesize the hormones tetraiodothyronine, thyroxine, T, and triiodothyronine, T3. Dot iodination of the hormones is preceded by the oxidation of iodide at the follicular cell colloid interface by the enzyme thyroid peroxidase. Tyrosine residues, bound to the secretory glycoprotein, thyroglobulin, are iodinated by the attachment of one or two oxidated iodides, forming monoiodinated tyrosine, MIT, or diiodinated tyrosine, DIT. The active hormones T, and T, are produced by combining one MIT and one DIT or two DITs. When formed, T, and T bound to the secretory glycoprotein thyroglobulin, are released into the colloid for storage. Release of T3 and T occurs in response to TSH, occupying TSH receptor sites on the follicular cell basal plasmolemma. Follicular cells, form filopodia that extend into the colloid capturing and endocytosing a small amount of it in endocytic vesicles. Have colloid-filled endocytic vesicles that deliver their content into the endosomal compartment where MIT, DIT, T, and TH are stripped from the thyroglobulin and are released into the cytosol. Secrete T but predominantly TH, and are exocytosed into the capillary beds of the richly vascularized connective tissue stroma of the thyroid gland within the bloodstream are bound to plasma proteins and are delivered to their target cells throughout the body. T, binds less avidly to the plasma proteins than T and T, is more likely to be endocytosed by its target cell than is T when in the cytosol, T, complexes much more readily than does T to nuclear thyroid receptor protein, but both complexes enter the nucleus to initiate transcription, Table 13.4 T3 is more physiologically active than T4T, and T, boost the metabolic rates of their target cells, promote the rate of growth in growing individuals, enhance mental acuity, stimulate carbohydrate and lipid metabolism, and increase heart rate, respiration, and muscle action. T, and T, decrease the production of fatty acids, cholesterol, and triglycerides, and facilitate weight loss. Parafollicular cells, 
C cells, clear cells, stain lightly and are located at the periphery of follicles but share the basal lamina of the follicle. These cells produce the peptide hormone calcitonin, which is released directly into the capillary beds of the thyroid connective tissue stroma, attaches to calcitonin receptors of osteoclasts, and inhibits them from resorbing bone, see Table 13.4. Calcitonin is released by parafollicular cells if the plasma calcium levels are greater than normal. 6. The parathyroid glands, the parathyroid glands, Fig 13.8, are represented as four small, 5x 4x 2 mm, individual glands located on the postero superior and postero inferior poles of the thyroid gland. Each parathyroid gland is enveloped in its own connective tissue capsule which may become infiltrated by adipose cells in an adult. Connective tissue septa entering the substance of the glands convey nerves, blood vessels, and lymph vessels, and support the cords of parenchymal cells and the rich capillary network. Theparophthyroid glands produce parathyroid hormone, PTH, which, see Table 13.4 increases blood calcium levels and, in concert with calcitonin, produced by the parafollicular cells of the thyroid, maintains optimal concentrations of calcium within the bloodstream and the interstitial fluid. Binds to PTH receptors of osteoblasts, prompting them to release osteoclast stimulating factor to increase the number and activity of osteoclasts. Acts on the kidneys to conserve calcium and to increase the production of vitamin D, which enhances the ability of the alimentary canal to increase the amount of calcium absorption. The parenchyma of the parathyroid gland is composed of two cell populations, chief cells and oxyphal cells. Chief cells, small, round, eosinophilic cells that form clusters of cells throughout the richly vascularized substance of the parathyroid glands, manufacture preproparathyroid hormone on their rough endoplasmic reticulum. This prohormone is cleaved within the rough endoplasmic reticulum to form proparathyroid hormone which is transported to the Kalgai complex where it is cleaved to form PTH. The packaged hormone is stored in secretory granules until its release via exocytosis. Oxyphal cells are larger, stain darker, and are much fewer in number than chief cells. They appear in small clusters, and their function is unknown, although some investigators suggest that they are inactive chief cells. Primary hyperparathyroidism Primary hyperparathyroidism, a condition most prevalent in women, is an overproduction of PTH. The word primary in this case indicates that overproduction is due to a non-malignant hyperplasia of one or more of the parathyroid glands. Excess plasma levels of PTH cause an overabundance of calcium and decreased phosphate levels in the blood and interstitial fluid. This condition results in bone mineral loss, bone pain and fractures, muscle weakness, paresthesia, fatigue, development of kidney stones, nausea, vomiting, confusion, and depression. Hypoparathyroidism, hypoparathyroidism results from a deficiency in secreting PTH. A common cause is injury to one or more of the parathyroid glands during thyroid surgery. Hypoparathyroidism is characterized by low blood calcium levels, retention of bone calcium, and increased phosphate resorption in the kidneys. Symptoms include muscle spasms, paresthesia, numbness, tingling, muscle tetany in facial and laryngeal muscles, cataract formation, mental confusion, and loss of memory. Intravenous doses of calcium gluconate, vitamin D, and oral calcium are the only treatment for survival. Graves disease, Graves disease is the most common form of hyperthyroidism, resulting from the immune system attacking the thyroid gland, causing an overproduction of the hormone thyroxine. When severe, it attacks the tissues behind the eyes, producing exophthalmus and skin lesions around the shins and tops of the feet. Additionally, Graves' disease can increase the body's metabolic rate, leading to a number of health problems, including increased heart rate. It is most common in women older than 20 years. Treatments do not stop the immune attacks, but they can ease symptoms and decrease thyroxine production. Simple goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland resulting from an insufficient intake of iodine. 
Simple goiter is associated with neither hyperthyroidism nor hypothyroidism and can be treated with supplemental intake of iodine in the diet. Hypothyroidism, or underactive thyroid, is a condition in which the thyroid gland does not produce enough hormones. It is most common in women older than 50 years. When left untreated, it upsets the normal balance in the body and can cause many health problems, including fatigue, obesity, joint pain, heart disease, mental sluggishness, loss of hair, and failure of body functions. Synthetic thyroid hormone is the effective treatment of choice. Myxedema is an extreme form of hypothyroidism resulting in several health problems, including depression, mental slowness, weakness, bradycardia, and fatigue. Additional symptoms include a swollen face, bagginess under the eyes, and non-pitting edema of the skin as a result of excesses of glycosaminoglycans and proteoglycans infiltrating the extracellular matrix. Patients with myxedema need immediate medical attention. Cretinism is a severe form of hypothyroidism occurring in fetal life through childhood as a result of the congenital absence of a thyroid gland. Patients with cretinism display severely stunted physical and mental growth. Suprarenal glands, adrenal glands The paired suprarenal glands are surrounded by an abundance of adipose tissue in their position on the superior pole of each kidney. Each of these small glands weighs less than 10 g and is invested by its capsule that provides slender connective tissue elements that convey neural elements and a profuse blood supply into the substance of the gland. The glands are subdivided into an outer cortex and a small, inner medulla, Fig 13.9, each with a different embryonic origin, the cortex is derived from mesoderm, whereas the medulla arises from neural crest. Each suprarenal gland has three arteries supplying it, the superior, middle, and inferior suprarenal arteries. These vessels perforate the capsule and form the subcapsular plexus from which short and long cortical arteries arise. Short cortical arteries give rise to, fenestrated sinusoidal capillaries, whose fence tray increase in diameter as the capillaries penetrate deeper into the cortex. Sinusoidal capillaries, which are drained by small venules that pass through the medulla and deliver their blood into the suprarenal vein long cortical arteries have no branches in the cortex, they enter the medulla and form a capillary plexus, which is drained by small venules that deliver their blood into the suprarenal vein. The suprarenal cortex is composed of three overlapping concentric zones, the outermost zona glomerulosa, the middle and widest region, the zona fasciculata, and the innermost zone, the zona reticularis, see Fig 13.9. These regions secrete the cholesterol-based hormones, mineralocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and androgens, in response to the binding of ACTH to their ACTH receptors, see Table 13.4. The parenchymal cells of the zona glomerulosa, the outermost of the three concentric regions of the suprarenal cortex, display occasional lipid droplets and a wealth of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. These cells manufacture, in response to ACTH and angiotensin II, aldosterone and a limited quantity of deoxycorticosterone. Mineralocorticoids help regulate electrolyte and water balance by acting on distal convoluted tubules of the kidneys. The widest region of the cortex is the zona fasciculata, whose large cells, arranged in longitudinal columns, are so well endowed by lipid droplets that in histologic sections they resemble sponges hence they are called spongiocytes. In response to the presence of ACTH, these cells secrete the glucocorticoids cortisol and corticosterone, hormones that control the metabolism of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. They enhance gluconeogenesis and glycogen synthesis in the liver and lipolysis and proteolysis in adipocytes and muscle cells. In excess levels, they suppress the immune system and have anti-inflammatory properties. The thinnest and innermost region of the cortex is the zona reticularis, whose cells resemble the spongiocytes of the zona fasciculata but with smaller lipid droplets. The parenchymal cells of this zone are arranged in networks of anastomosing cords and manufacture androgens, predominantly dehydroepiandrosterone and androstenedione, Neither dehydroepiandrosterone nor androstenedione exerts any significant effects in a healthy individual. The suprarenal medulla, 
see Fig 13 to 9 and Table 13.4, is quite small, constituting approximately 10% of the suprarenal gland in weight. The richly vascularized medulla has an ample neural supply and is composed of two types of parenchymal cells, the more populous chromaffin cells and the large, sympathetic ganglion cells. Chromaffin cells receive their name because they have a great affinity to chromaffin salts, indicating that their cytoplasm is well endowed with catecholamines, specifically epinephrine and norepinephrine. These cells are ubiquitous throughout the suprarenal medulla and are arranged in cord-like clusters. Chromaffin cells are innervated by preganglionic sympathetic neurons. When these neurons release their neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, it binds to the acetylcholine receptors of chromaffin cells, depolarizing their plasmalemma and resulting in the release of epinephrine, if the stimulus is physiologic, or norepinephrine, if the stimulus is emotional, into the capillary beds. Epinephrine increases blood pressure and heart rate and depresses gastrointestinal smooth muscle motility. Norepinephrine increases blood pressure by causing vascular smooth muscle contraction. Sympathetic ganglion cells are scattered throughout the suprarenal medulla and modified so that they are without dendrites and axons Cushing syndrome, Cushing syndrome, hyperadrenocorticism, results from adenomas located in the anterior pituitary gland leading to an increase in ACTH production. Excess ACTH causes the adrenal glands to be enlarged, the suprarenal cortex to be hypertrophied, and the overproduction of cortisol. Patients are obese, especially in the face, neck, and trunk. They exhibit muscle wasting and osteoporosis. Men become sterile, and women have amenorrhea. Addison's disease, Addison's disease is an adrenocortical insufficiency resulting from destruction of the adrenal cortex from some diseases. It is most often caused by an autoimmune process. It can be caused by tuberculosis and some other infectious diseases. Symptoms develop over several months and include fatigue, muscle weakness, low blood pressure, nausea, vomiting, joint pains, decreased blood glucose, weight loss, and depression. Treatment is by replacement hormones pineal island, pineal body the pineal gland, and evagination of the roof of the diencephalon, see table 13.4, is a small endocrine gland weighing less than 150 mg. It is covered by pia mater, which, acting as a capsule, sends blood vessel bearing septa into the substance of the gland, subdividing it into partial lobules. Two cell types compose the parenchyma of this gland pinealocytes and interstitial cells. Pinealocytes, the principal cells of the pineal gland, possess one or two long tortuous processes whose terminals are flattened and dilated as they approach the capillaries. These cells possess a well-developed cytoskeleton and specialized tubular structures of unknown function, called synaptic ribbons, whose numbers increase during the dark segment of the diurnal cycle. Postganglionic sympathetic fibers form synapses with pinealocytes, stimulating them to release melatonin at night but not during the day, establishing the body's diurnal rhythm. By inhibiting the release of growth hormone and gonadotropin, they regulate certain bodily functions. Levels of melatonin in the blood are highest before bedtime. The glia-like interstitial cells are more prominent in the pineal stalk than in the bulk of the gland. They stain deeply and possess long cellular processes containing intermediate filaments, microfilaments, and microtubules. These cells along with connective tissue provide support to the pinealocytes. The pineal glands contain calcified structure known as corpora arenacea, brain sand, of unknown function or origin. Calcification begins early in childhood and increase throughout the life. The central nervous system may be protected to some degree by the action of melatonin in scavenging and eliminating free radicals resulting from oxidative stress. Some individuals use melatonin as a supplement to combat mood and sleep disorders and depression. It has been reported that exposure to bright artificial light may inhibit the production of melatonin, easing depression. Additionally, Many individuals suggest that doses of melatonin taken at the proper time may reduce jet lag.